Well, good Sunday morning, guys. Uh, in the office to do the money news. It's going to be short on the, the news. Ain't much going on. Uh, so let's get right to it. CRST, their system, still kind of a mess, but they're they're working as hard as they can. They're catching up. So uh, hang in there, everybody over here. Uh, they pretty much squared up with me, except they owe me fuel discounts for like the last two or three weeks that I haven't got when I've got fuel with their Com data card. So we'll see what's up with that. Uh, in fact, I'll be in Birmingham tomorrow. After I unload, I got to go there. Someone, my Com data cards got hacked. There's charges on it in places I wasn't even at. So I'm going to swing by there and get a new Com data card. And while I'm in there, I'm going to ask them what's up with that. So uh, other than that, I think they've fixed everything. They've got the fuel surcharge up back up to 100%. It was at 97. I don't know. I think that's what their expedited gets. And what the flat big gets 100% of the fuel surcharge. So uh, I think that it got put in wrong or something. And uh, other than that, they've squared up with me and got everything right except this fuel. So we're working on that. Uh, no news in the trucks. Uh, you know, same old as last week. Coming down a little bit, but slowly. Um, rates are down, of course. Um, we knew they'd come down off that craziness from a year ago. And we're in the middle of the slow time. But uh, this week I've done real good. Load I'm on now is only 248 a mile. But if you watch my business model plan, yes, rate per mile is a very important thing and what we use mostly. But you also know I have a, a day rate, you know. So this is only 450 miles. That's uh, one day. I seldom keep anything on my truck over 24 hours. I do five to 700 mile hops and I don't go long. So that still pays me 1112 bucks for a day, which is well within my $1,000 a day to the truck. So uh, to me, mileage rate really comes into play on long runs, two and three day runs, but I don't do those. So um, my goal is to make as much as possible um, uh, so 1100 bucks in a day. That's pretty good. I got one from this week, 700 miles, still did it 24 hours. And that's like 2,400 bucks. I mean, that's, that's what you're going for. Uh, so I'm going to add this up and this will be a quick one. So while you're waiting, I got a bunch of videos from uh, APU shenanigans I dealt with this week. So it's always something as an owner operator. So watch those and I'll be back. See you in a minute. All right, man, that's why you need to carry stuff with you. So I just stopped to do a check. When I was looking around, I found, because I always walk around with my flashlight, look down in here, I thought, oh crap, oil leak or something, right? Well, no. Turned out to be a fuel filter on my APU. See this filter? Well, this bracket has busted loose, right? Rusted out. So unbeknownst to me, the thing's actually been leaning against the pulley, the flywheel pulley, and it run a hole in it. Well, must have just bounced. It wasn't running when it did this, but must have taken its last good whack and it was just leaking diesel out. All right. I have it. I had another new filter and I just spun it on there. Uh, shouldn't be any more fluid coming through unless I turn this on. Any more fuel. But just in case to catch it, I put the new filter on. I'm not gonna be able to run my APU till I get home and I'll have to drill a couple holes through there and uh, run them through that bracket down there like that, right? So just a few hand tools, maybe 30, 40 minutes of my time, save me a four or $500 road call. All right, all right guys, see you bye. Owner operator life, ain't it fun? Oh, not one flip-flop is asking if I'm okay in this rest area, but we don't really expect that. All right, see you, bye. Back home, Friday evening. That is a beautiful sunset, huh? Been home for a while. We power washed Ellie off in the trailer, cleaned her up a little bit, so. I should have showed you this. Huh? I thought of showing you when I was about to leave, but basically what happened was rust bucket strikes again, so. This bracket, whoop, hold on. Oh, sorry about that. Don't want my socket. Of course, it's a 10 millimeter. 
running down into my drain down there and then I gotta fish it out while I get the kids. So anyways, that you can see right there, rusted out. It holds a fuel filter housing. So what had happened is it's probably been broke for a while. The fuel filter that was on it, I threw it away. You know, it looks just like this one I have. And it had fallen down. You can kind of see the shiny spot on that pulley. And was just sitting there rubbing. And it had ground a pretty good chunk out of that old filter. And almost wore it completely through. Probably the last night I ran the APU. And, uh, but it wasn't leaking. And just bouncing up and down the road obviously was enough to knock the final little hole in it to where there was diesel all over the place, just what was in this filter. But, you know, that's about a cup of diesel. That goes a long ways. Looks makes a big mess. My God is good. At least he showed me where it was before I started it up. Probably would have just shut off, but you never know. Get the right uh, heat, friction. <laughs> You could, car you could start a fire. Diesel's kind of hard to light on fire, but it can be done. So nonetheless, so what we will have to do, some holes here. I'll just have to drill through here. Now I'm out the backside here and remount that up tomorrow. Not doing nothing else today. All right, just wanted to show you that. I think I'll put these in between the money, the news and the money, give you something to watch. All right, y'all. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday when we do the money news video. Bye now. Well, we're gaining on it. I had to use my little cutoff wheel, grind out that corner, and get that bracket up in there better and flush. I got a couple holes drilled in there. So I think we got it. We'll put it together, clean it all out and see if she runs. All right, owner operator shenanigans. When I got my princess hanging out with me in the shop, <laughs> riding around. Back to the grind. No days off this week, really. Well, it's kind of a day off. Yeah, I'm working, but it's a beautiful day, hanging out with my kids. And then tomorrow, I think we're gonna leave tomorrow afternoon instead of Monday morning at three or four in the morning. I don't like getting up at that hour. All right, see you in a bit. Of course, since I drilled the holes a little higher and this is at an angle, it wouldn't fit, so I had to notch this corner out. Wasn't too bad. Your boy's got mechanical skills, I just don't like to use them, but looking at the cost of these overhauls, I might do this one myself. I've <coughs> never done a semi-truck motor. But I've done many, many, many Cummins motors and pick em up trucks, including this one. I used to be into hopping them up and racing them. And other than obviously a lot bigger, these are actually simpler. I've been uh, doing some research and I don't know. I want about 35 grand to rebuild that. And I think I can do it for 15 in my time. And that's buying the tools I need that I don't have. Uh, I like a counter bore, uh, a few other things, a sleeve puller, stuff like that. And I think I could do it. I think I could do it in a week, but I think I would take two weeks or maybe three weeks off. So, you know, I would still come in, I think 16 grand or something maybe. A lot better than 30. So, but that's yet to be seen. We don't know what we're doing. All right, y'all, back to the grind, literally. All right, we're done. Now it's mounted up in there. Good. Far away, I don't have my flashlight, but yeah, far away from the pulleys, we're good to go. Uh, haven't started it yet, I'll do that in a little bit. I have a ton of brake cleaner in here, cleaning stuff up. You service your own APU, man, it's pretty simple, but remember to fill this full of fuel or that sucker will never start. So, uh, basic, you know, there's your oil filter, change your oil. It's easy to do, save yourself some money. 
The only thing that's tough and you can't see it, well, maybe you can, where is it? Mm, yeah, I need a light. There's a primary fuel filter back in there. That's, the air filter's in here, that's easy to switch. Um, that primary fuel filter is a pain in the butt. In fact, I haven't changed it. I've only changed it once since I owned the truck because it's that much of a pain in the butt to get to. So I just keep running it. Figure if it gets full, it'll plug up. I don't know. All right, we're going to bypass a hose over here because I am still getting coolant leaks. I don't get it. have a light either but if you look back there you can see there's coolant on the frame still after I clean that all up from those lines going back to the bunk heater that I don't use so we're gonna bypass the bunk heater there's the feed line for the bunk heater there's the return line we're just gonna run them together bypass the whole system see if that fixes it I lose a little bit of coolant it was about well, I don't know, it was about up to here it ain't much it's about a water bottle every 2,000 miles, but I'm hoping that's all of it spraying out back there. I hope we're not burning and coolant internally. I don't think we are. Truck runs too good for that. No pressure in the cooling system, no heat issues. So it is what it is. If we are burning it internally and it gets work worse, rebuild time. All right, y'all. Back to the money. See you bye. Like 
you know, 16 pallets of something where a 26 footer is just a little too short and it's very aggravating. And you got to run two, uh, two 26 foot tarps, a lot of work. So I'll take one of my 26s off this older one here. Nothing wrong with it. And I'll just put it up there on the top for storage. Uh, oh, these. These steering wheel holders probably never seen a pair of these. These are work boots. I know, I know you guys wear your flip flop slides and pajama bottoms, but we wear these when, uh, in the flatbed world. But I'll show you some love. I have on camo sweats today. I would never go to a customer wearing those, but around the house I will wear sweatpants. I don't have any pajama bottoms, so I can't I can't go there with you, but I'll show you love with the uh, sweatpants at least. Alright. Finished good early in the day. I think I'll take the family to dinner. Woo, being an owner operator is fun, ain't it? If you guys can't deal with fixing little things like this all the time, don't buy an older used truck. Especially one from the Midwest that's got rust issues. Followed my videos, man. I've sandblasted these frames, cleaned them up. I put a ton of work into uh, getting rid of the rust and making this truck look nice. But still, every once in a while, little brackets rust out on me and stuff. Looks like that smoke's clearing out now. That's good. But like if you look into there, that was all rusty when I got it, man. I had it sandblasted down to bare metal and repainted it. Just because it looks better. Right, you're right. Bye, y'all. God bless you. See you in a bit on the money. Okay. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed those clips of uh, always something. Always something. Unless you got a brand new truck. But I don't make enough to afford that. Not at these prices. So let's get to the money. Now, before we get to the money, I don't usually address such nonsense or trolls. But I want to clear up a couple things. I've told you this if you follow the channel you already know this but a lot of you are new so let's just clear the air on a couple of things because apparently there's all these chat rooms for truckers i don't know anything about that i'm a low-tech guy and uh some of them are even set up for crst flatbed guys lease purchase guys i believe and whatever and then i've had some youtube comments and whatever um, kind of accusations and things like that. So let's clear up two things. One, this is not officially affiliated with CRST. I am not paid to do these videos. Um, they don't tell me what to say in the videos. They, uh, they know I do the videos. That's pretty well known at this point, but they, they have no influence in anything I say. They have never said for me to say anything they've never asked me they've never said you know hey you can't say that and i don't really care what you get here is uh just one man's business i give you everything and the reason i do that if you remember the backstory, uh the lord just convicted me one day if i was going to sit around and complain about truck drivers without helping them uh you know i really it's an invalid complaint so i started the channel to help guys with owner operator stuff uh, securement stuff and whatever so i give you the numbers you do with them what you want this is hopefully i know they've helped a lot of guys so i'll continue to do them that's number one number two lots of accusations that i'm fed special loads that one is could be partially true i don't know you know I work with the same agents all the time, and I do get a lot of loads before they ever go on the load board, but let's clear up one thing. Out of the handful of agents I've worked with for over the last year, I've met one of them for like five minutes at uh, at the company driver appreciation day in Talladega. Um, we didn't have dinner. Um, I don't know these people. I don't buy them anything. I don't take them out to dinner. I don't know them. It's just on the phone. and. If I'm fed stuff, it's only because I pick up when I'm supposed to and I deliver when I'm supposed to. That's it. That's all I do, guys. And I don't damage anything. It's a simple thing. If there's any favoritism, it's because of that. You know, when I'm out, I run and I run hard. You know, I don't <laughs> park next to a guy uh, the other day and couldn't help but notice he had a whole gaming station in his truck. He's playing video games in this. I don't have time for that. If you guys have time to sit around and play video games, awesome. Good for you. 
Um, <clears throat> my time is at home, not in a truck stop. So I'm home every weekend and then some, so I run my butt off. It's a 10 and go, 10 and go, 10 and go. I don't sit around and I'm, I'm usually working 14 hours a day, if not more, if I shift the 14 with the split. Um, I've had 16 and 18 hour days, whatever it takes to get it done. When I'm working, I'm working. So if they feed me anything, it's just based on performance, not friendship. So um, that's about all I'm going to say on that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So this week was a short, quick little week. Didn't leave till Tuesday. When I did leave, I picked up in Blyville, Arkansas. Okay, before we get going, as always, these numbers are to me. After CRST takes for 25% of the line haul, they give you everything else. Line haul and stop pay. I seldom do multi-stop routes, but uh, fuel search all yours, tarps all yours, blah, blah, blah. So Blyville to Toledo, Ohio, that was a single coil out of Kinder Morgan. I hate going in there, such a mess, but it is what it is. That was where the coil was that I wanted to go, uh, so I took it. I paid me $1,955.97 at $3.16 a mile on 618 miles. I then deadheaded 55 miles to Melon, Melvindale, I'm probably saying that wrong, Michigan, suburb of Detroit. Uh, picked up uh, another coil, uh, paid, going to Kansas City, Missouri, paid me $2,420.52. If you notice, I did that same route last week, pretty much. Um, that's a good paying lane, so I'm going to run it till it's dry. Um, at $3.19 a mile, total of 1,375 miles. Um, uh, it works out to $3.18 cents a loaded miles. I had 55 empty miles. Hey, you can do with those what you like. So you add all that together, my gross to the truck this week, and that's Tuesday to Thursday. So I finished up Thursday about two in the afternoon. I could have made it home Thursday night, actually, probably about five, uh, no, about, let's see, about five hours from there. I'd have been home by eight o'clock at night, and I could have called it a week and had a three-day weekend. However, I decided to run over to um, Redbud, Illinois, and preload this coil going to Birmingham, so didn't get home till Friday about noon. Either way, short week, so this is basically a Tuesday to Thursday, three days worth of work. My gross was $4,376.49, minus my every week deductions of $375. You guys know them, but for those who are new, that is trailer rent, base plates, bobtail insurance, quail comm, trans flow, uh, whatever, every other little deduction I have. And fuel receipts before discounts, which I uh, mentioned before, I'm working on that. And one of these fuels is actually, I just fueled 50 miles away. I'm full of fuel now. It's actually for the load I'm on. But if it's in the envelope, we put it in here. Um, $1,838.15. Uh, ran really light this week. I averaged about 6.1 miles to the gallon in my truck. I had $41 in parking, uh, reserve parking, and I did a truck wash of $80.50. Leaves me a net for the week, a three-day week of $2,041.84. Now, these next two deductions I'm going to give you are just to help you with tax write-offs and I things. So, first of all, before I forget, um, both of these I have tax exemptions set up at. Uh, if you have a business license, you're tax exempt, sales tax, state sales tax e exempt. So, because uh, the feds don't want you writing off state sales tax. That's basically how that works. So, um, first thing I bought was a new pressure washer. I just, I wear them out every year. I pressure wash my truck every year, uh, every week. And, you know, most people use a pressure washer three or four times a year. I use it 50 times a year. So, I, 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 I run through them about once a year pressure washer was three hundred dollars uh, three hundred dollar three hundred this is a tough language english three hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents i also bought that tarp that you just seen and that was three hundred and sixty four dollars and fifty six cents those are both tax deductible items uh after all that still leaves me a net of one thousand two hundred seventy nine dollars and thirty nine cents all right and that's all I got for you guys. I'm going to get ready here. Got to head out in four or five hours because I don't get up at three o'clock in the morning anymore. It's not my thing. So I'll run all the way to Birmingham tonight pretty much. 
I think so, yeah. I'll leave about 3, 4 o'clock, get down there about 9, 10 o'clock, and start my day down there. I already got a backhaul coming back. Um, a load of, uh, what is it, metal roofing. Uh, I hauled it the other week, but it's a pretty good load. Out of uh, Warrior, Alabama, just above Birmingham, back up here to Mount Olives, uh, St. Saint, Saint Louis area. So, And then if I had to guess from there, I'll probably run to Portage, area chicago and then i'll get something coming back and we'll wrap it up again all right y'all god bless you and like subscribe questions whatever you got send them this way i do my best to answer them uh if i miss one i apologize the channel's still not big but we're almost a thousand subscribers and sometimes i can't keep up with the comments or they don't notify me i mean i'll see them later if i see them later i'll try to get to them just know them if i if you ask me something and you say oh well he answers everybody else but me. It ain't like that, man. I answer everybody. I either answer you or remove your comment. That's how it breaks down to. So if it's a troll, you get removed. I don't even acknowledge it. Uh, if it's a question, I do my best to answer it. All right, y'all. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye now.